So we're heading into a new garden season. It's time to start thinking about your soils. If you've got heavy clay soils that hold a lot of water and are void of all nutrients, compacts really badly, this video is for you. Hang out, because I'm going to give you the dirt on dirt. Hi, I'm Doc. The chickens are looking at me. Welcome back to the garden. It's the end of the summer growing season, and it's time for me to start thinking about my fall and winter plantings. One of the things that I have to take into consideration here is my soils. In the Gulf Coast region of Southeast Texas, we have a lot of clay and we have a lot of sand. Those things are a problem. And in order to have a good garden bed, you have to really amend your soil, make sure it's aerated and those kinds of things. Nugget agrees, that's the rooster. So if you're finding yourself thinking about your soils and you find that it holds a whole lot of water, or maybe it compacts really tight and doesn't fall apart in your hand, and when it gets rain, it just, it just oversaturates everything, you've probably got heavy clay soils. And I'm gonna help you figure out how to fix that today. All right, let's get our hands dirty. So how's your soil? That's the question you need to be asking yourself right off the bat. In this case, I started this garden this season. It's been through one growing season only. And at the time, the only thing we had available to us was topsoil. It was during the early parts of the COVID pandemic. And that topsoil, when it was delivered, we had a lot of other drainage issues in the yard. And so I decided to build this area up where I was going to have my garden. It was red, but it was kind of fluffy. It had some sand in it. And uh, it seemed like it'd be okay. So I spread it all through the garden. And uh, then it rained. And it was a sloppy mess. And then... Two days later, it was concrete. You couldn't dig in it, you couldn't do anything to it. The soil is very, very heavy clay. And to the point when I planted things in this garden, I planted things that could add nutrients to the soil, like my purple hole peas. And we've talked about those in another seed saving video. But we've also done some other things too. I added what little compost I had into the soil and, uh, and tried to do my best to give it what it could, but it's still not good. In fact, let's take a look. So this is the soil the way it is today. I mean, it's full of weeds. It's been kind of a rough year. You can see I planted stuff here. This was, uh, uh, I did turnips early in the year. They did pretty good, but it's full of weeds and everything else. Look at this soil though. This is like, look. This is my soil. You see how full of clay that is? Look how it just clumps together like that. This is not good soil. It's hard as a rock, it's full of rocks. And I did put a mulch layer on it, a heavy mulch layer, and this is what's left of that mulch layer. Uh, and that helped to break down the soil a little bit. It kept it from getting too, um, too hard, too covered up and hard during the growing season. But we've gotta find a way to add some nutrients to this ground so it's not just this nasty clay and rocks. All right, so now let's talk about how we get the first step of this done. We need to take care of the compaction of this soil, okay? I usually go for a no-dig method. It's what I've always done before. And the reason you want to do that is mainly because you already created a structure in your soil. There's, there's microorganisms, there's actual organisms, there's bacteria. There's a structure that's been created, but I don't have that here. This garden might as well be brand new. I built a little structure with the plants I've planted, but it's not enough. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to break it up a little bit. Now you can do this with even your existing lawn. But the best tool you can have is a garden fork. This thing is old and worn out, but it works. It's also very heavy, which I like. You can do this with your existing lawn. If you want to plant a brand new garden and you can't get a bunch of mulch, you can actually help aerate the soil this way just by breaking up the dirt. All you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to push this in. You're going to lift it back and go forward and do it again. This just continues to break up the soil. It loosens it up. You can see it's higher than the existing soil around it. And it'll really help open up that structure so we can get some organic material into the garden. So there is one thing I need to do before I start turning the soil. I've got a lot of plants in this garden that are not gonna stay here. One of these are the collards, and I've gotta pull those out now. Also, I've got some peppers and fruits I need to peck for, pick, peck, pick a pick a peckled pe the collards are actually doing really well, but they've uh, they got a problem with them. So I'm going to take care of those. I've got to pick some peppers and some other things before I pull up those plants. Oh yeah, my faves. <laughs> Rooster approved. Now 
Now you're probably why I just did that. I'm not done yet and I'll do some more. I had a small white fly problem, only on these collards. They grew pretty well. I planted them really, really early in the season. And uh, I've pretty much controlled the white flies, but um, they've got them again. They're starting to come back. Chickens don't like it, but this is the best way I know of. I just, I don't need them anymore. We're not eating them anymore. My family likes them, but I like them more than them. So it's time to get rid of them, put some new vegetable in here that they uh, really like to eat. And all I had to do was put it in the trash bag, seal it up and throw it away. And I mean in the trash. I could probably feed it to the chickens, but putting the bag over the top keeps the white flies contained and uh, doesn't let them get out while I'm getting rid of them. So that's what we did. All right, let's go take care of the rest of this stuff and let's pick some peppers. That's not bad. We've got a lot of uh, uh, Ikebon eggplants. We've got a ton of, of uh, banana peppers, which these just weren't flavorful. I'm not gonna save them along. Uh, and we've got a lot of peppers, so now it's time to pull up plants to get to work. a lot of hard work. Uh, this is an experiment. These are carrots. I was planning on pulling them all up because uh, nothing had produced at all. But as you can see, a few have started to produce. I showed you some uh, a minute ago. That's what these are. Uh, I planted them really early just to see what would happen. They live the whole time through the hot Texas summer, even a drought, uh, but they're just now starting to put on carrots. It was probably a waste of time. It was worth a try too. So instead the chickens get them. Hey guys, look what I got. Ooh, here you go, here you go. There you go. Carrots, chickens. Chickens love carrots. Carrots go to with chickens, anyway. worn out. Now, the next step in improving our soil, we've already broken it up. It's nice and nice and loose now, but we've got to add some organic matter to the soil. Now, there was already a bunch of uh, straw on top that I had used as mulch, and I'm going to turn that in. There's also a ton of these uh, brown dead leaves. We'll throw those in too. Uh, but there's a couple things you can use for this. One of the easiest ones to use is those leaves. There's leaves all over this place. You can take a big pile of, uh, of fall leaves, run them over with your lawnmower, it grinds them all up, catch them with a the bag, and you can throw them here in the garden. It's a simple, free way to add organic matter to your soil. Uh, another way to do it is you can use grass clippings. Leftover grass clippings are great. You can also add actual compost to this. Compost is one of the most amazing things you can ever, ever, ever use. Um, now you can make your own by simply piling up leaves in other yard debris in a heavy, big pile, you can actually compost it. This is a compost pile I started earlier this year. I haven't done anything with it, it's just sat. I will actually turn it over and uh, make it into better compost for the spring season. Also, this is some of the grass clippings or actually thatch from my yard. That's another whole video. And I'm gonna go ahead and compost this as well. I may mix the two in, I'm not sure yet. I may leave it on its own. But those are things you can use. Now, what we wanna to do to this soil is we want to turn this over. Now I know this breaks every no dig rule there is, and I know that, but I have garbage soil. You just saw it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually turn this whole thing over, and we're gonna add a little organic material into it. I've already added, I've got tons of leaves here. I don't need to add more leaves, but what I can also use is something we already have for free, and that's leftover plants. These are the plants I just pulled up. These are the purple whole peas. Now really, I'm gonna grab something real quick. These purple whole peas are great back in the garden, right? You may even get some voluntary stuff. I probably left some seeds in here, but all you have to do is cut it up kind of small. You don't want it to be really big. Just kind of cut it up. 
throw all that material out onto the garden before you turn it in. So I'm gonna do a little bit of that. I'm gonna put a little bit of compost in here, um, but we're gonna mix that into the soil using a shovel. I know, it's not no dig, but it's gonna give a structure and depth to our soil. It's gonna help bring the soil around a lot quicker. Okay, time to get back to work. Compost. This is the real deal. This is the black gold. This is the stuff that everybody talks about. Look at that. Stuff's awesome. It's very, very, very full of organic material. It's been rotted very well. This is leaf mold compost. This is something that uh, that we have here. At a, there's a. Um, it's called Nature's Way Resource. Not sponsored, that'd be amazing. But they're an amazing, amazing company. They make all kinds of compost mulches. Uh, they actually pick up product from you to compost. It's all 100% organic. They now sell some plants too, amazing place. Anyway, this is what the dreams are made of, boys and girls. We're gonna take some of this, we're gonna put a nice thick layer on top of our garden, and then we're gonna work it in. All right, let's get some compost. All right, let's go. Get in there. I really should have moved that pile closer to the garden. It's gonna take a while. Whew. I really should have moved that closer. Okay, now we're just gonna put a big thick layer on this whole thing, and when we're done, we're gonna mix it in. Let's go. One thing to keep in mind while you're doing this is if you have existing plants left in place, it's really important that you don't destroy them. In fact, it's going to be a little hard because this is held up so high in relation to these. I may pull these and bring it back up, but in the meantime, I still want to feed them. It's a simple way to feed them. Just lift up their leaves, sprinkle the compost in and around the plant. You don't put it real thick. You're just giving it a little bit of feed. We'll come back later when the uh, when they have finished growing and the season's over, and uh, or I've picked these since these are carrots, and we'll do the same thing to this bed. So that's it, it's really simple. Just be careful around your existing plants. Don't dig too far into the roots, and uh, just a little compost around the soil will help feed them a little bit. Okay. I got the compost laid. We're running out of daylight. It's taking a lot longer than I'd hoped, and. Well, I want to get done for you guys. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to finish working this bed to show you what's going on. Now, the idea here is, is that we put a compost layer on top. Remember, we worked in deep organic material. We broke up the soil. Those things helped to amend the lower soil. Now we have to amend the top soil. Now, normally in a no-dig method, you might just break up the top soil a little bit, put your compost on, mix it in, and you're done, ready to go. But in this case, I need to mix this in. And the main reason I need to mix it a little deeper than normal, it's thicker than normal, is because we have uh, seedlings going in here. Compost itself is, uh, a is very, very rich, and it may be a little bit too rich for new seeds. Sometimes you won't even get germination out of it. So what we want to do is mix that top layer in, and that way we've got a good base and a good amended soil to work with for seedlings. All right, let's get after it. And with the modern magic technology that we have, we're done. Okay, so that didn't take as long as I thought it would, but I thought it would make for really, really, really boring video. So anyway, we've now mixed it in. You can see the difference in the soil texture. I mean, look at this. This is our new soil texture. 
Now that the soil bed's finished, we have a high volume of organic material in here. To finish this thing off and get it ready for planting, we've got to put a mulch on there. Mulch is the next most important thing in this step. We've already aerated the soil, loosened it up. We've added organic ma uh, matter deep into the soil. And now we've mixed in a, a good thick layer of compost on the top, not leaving too much compost there to burn our seeds. Now we need to protect it. Okay, so we're finally at the last step. This is probably the most crucial one. If you don't have the money for compost, if you don't have compost available, if you're not able to work uh, a really good soil into the top, mulch can save you. If you recall how bad my soil was when we started this, I had nothing that was added to it. It was simply clay, topsoil, sand. It was really, really hard when it was dry. It was slippery and nasty when it was wet, and it clumped really bad. Uh, and just putting mulch over the top makes a huge difference. So with this bed here, we've got the good soil like we talked about. Now it's time to mulch. Now this is easy straw. It's a seeding mulch and it's, it's been um, chopped up real fine. Uh, not sponsored. Unless you want to. That'd be great. But anyway, you can find this really, really easy in the... Um, in most, you know, tractor supplies, feed stores, even Walmart, I think, has them uh, around the United States. Um, there are some weeds in this. I don't like that. Um, it's kind of disappointing. I wish there was something else that wasn't a grass-type material I could use. But wood chips are too expensive. I don't have any, and this stuff is really, really, really cheap. So it also makes a, it also kind of, the tack, it says with tack, it makes it stick together. So it forms a really tight mat. Not much is getting through that thing uh, once you wet it down. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'll just show you how thick we're gonna lay this mulch, and we'll get onto it. This is messy, by the way. Okay, so this is a pretty simple process. Just like you think, it's mulch. We're gonna lay it on, that's about three to four inches thick. Three inches thick, that's about what we want. It's gonna shrink down a little bit when we get to the end. It's going to allow us to, uh, to keep our water in, the heat and cold out, and to protect our plants during the fall. All right, there you go. We've got our deep cover mulch now. You can see everything's covered nice and tight. It's a little bit loose. So uh, we'll just water this in and uh, we'll be ready to go. All right, now what that's gonna do is gonna keep everything from coming apart. We got a lot more to do in this garden. This is just one section, but uh, this is how you improve your heavy clay soil that has no nutrients in it. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. The most important thing to take away from this is that your soil doesn't have to be great. Of course, the better it is, the better your plant, plants are gonna grow, the more vegetation you're gonna get, the better tasting vegetables you're gonna get. This soil was garbage, and I grew a lot of really good food this year, so don't be discouraged by it. If you don't have compost, okay, improvise. Put something in there. At least get some ground cover, some kind of mulch. It can be crushed leaves, like I was talking about, using the lawnmower uh, to shred them up, or uh, even grass clippings, although it's a little hot. Just be sure that when you put them around existing plants, that you don't put them too close to the stems, because the uh, that could cause some issues with different diseases and stuff. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you hanging out for this video, and if you liked it, make sure and give me a big thumbs up and if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe chickens are getting restless yeah it's because we got a creepy crawly in there anyway uh go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already we're gonna have some more videos coming along the way and if you know somebody that would benefit from this video that has horrible 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 soil like i do let them know about the video share it with them that would really help me out and help them a lot uh too so guys i want to leave you like i always do there's only four really important things in life you have to believe in something. You need someone to love, something to do, and something to look forward to. I always look forward to you guys and working in my garden. Don't forget to get your hands dirty. All right, we'll see you next time. Doc out. Yep, they're jealous. What do you think, chicken head?